Okay, so yesterday you were looking at the link between multiplication and addition and subtraction. Today we're looking at the link between multiplication number sentences and other multiplication number sentences. Um, so really looking forward to seeing how you get on with that. It's going to make you more flexible in the way that you calculate. So rather than thinking, I always have to use this approach, you're going to have lots and lots of different ways. And I hope you're going to really enjoy making those connections. I can't wait to see how creative you can be in seeing all the different links that can be made. Let's get going. We will come to our multiplication, but first I just had to include this example from Chloe. She sent me some brilliant examples through and I thought it's only right that we get some of her work in. So here we go. The branching database um, questions that we had on, on Friday. So think of questions that you could put in each of the boxes that could sort these four shapes. What could those questions be? Pause the video and have a think. Okay, and, and let's have a look. Th these are the examples that, that Chloe actually sent through as well. Um, so we had um, lines of symmetry. Yes, for these two shapes, they have lines of symmetry. No, for those two, they don't have lines of symmetry. Um, we had here equal length sides. Well, yes, for the square, um, but all these sides aren't an equal length for the triangle. And then we had for the bottom two shapes here, reflex angles. Well, yes, the, the, there are two reflex angles here, one here and one here, and and then no for the shape on the right. Uh, again, great stuff to see these wonderful examples. And so let's have a little recap from where we got to yesterday. We were looking at addition and subtraction number sentences and seeing how they link to multiplication number sentences. So for example, 12 plus 12 plus 16. I have to think 12 and 16 are in which times table, which is a common factor of 12 and 16. Um, and an example is four. Um, so four in, tw how many fours in 12? There are three. Uh, and then the next 12, that's another three. So that's six fours in total there. And in 16, that is four fours. So in total, there are 10 fours. 12 plus 12 plus 16 is the same as four times 10. Um, now, have a go at the next three. Uh, pause the video, have a think. Wh which are the common factors there? Um, and uh, which times table number sentence will match? Pause the video and have a go for those three. Okay, well, let's have a look. So 42 and 30. Do you think of a factor, a number that you can multiply to make 42 and 30? Well, the one that I went for was six. So six times seven is 42. Um, six times five is 30. So seven add five. How many lots of six in total? 12 lots of six. 63 subtract 21 well 63 and 21 a uh, common factor is 7 7 goes into 63 and 21 7 9 to 63 but then I take away um, three of those lots of uh, 7 so in total I'm left with six lots of 7 um, and then the last one 130 subtract 39 well 130 is 10 lots of 13 39 is 3 lots of 13. So in total, how many lots of 13? Seven lots of 13. 13 multiplied by seven. Now today's video is called I Know So. I think it's a really important one. We're going to use some visual representations to show um, what multiplication can look like and to help you see connections between multiplication questions and also the different ways that multiplication can be broken down to calculate. So today is an opportunity for real understanding and real creativity. When you were younger, perhaps you'd have seen, uh, first seen multiplication represented using what we call an array. Um, so here we've got this pattern of dots, um, five in the top row. So three rows of five, three rows of five is 15, or, or five lots of three is 15. Um, now we're gonna use what I'd call an area model. Um, <laughs> you have to excuse the noisy birds there in the background. Um, so, so this one, again, is the same really, um, because if you look at that top line, it is five squares and it's three lots of five squares. So again, 15 squares in total. We're, we're going to use area models, but we're going to use it to, to look at larger quantities. Um, now, first of all, um, when we're multiplying single digit numbers, often you'll just be encouraged to, to know the facts. Seven sixes are 42. Um, but there comes a point where we can't just be memorising times table facts. We, we have to find ways to calculate. So, for example, 14 times 6. That's not a calculation that I memorise, that, that I know instantly. 
Um, but we want lots of different ways to work that out. So, for example, I might just think, well, it's going to be double seven sixes. Seven sixes is 42. So 14 sixes, 14 sixes must be 84. Um, so, so let's have a look at the ways we could see that. So this grid shows 14 squares along the top and it's six lots of 14. So I could break that down in different ways to calculate. I, I might decide to break the 14 down into a 10 and a 4. So I've got 10 lots of 6 and then I've got 4 lots of 6. And I could work out the areas of each section. There must be 60 that are blue and 24 that are white. But I don't have to break it down like that. I mean, like I said, I could break it down into two lots of 7 sixes. So just split the 14 in half. That There'll be 42 squares in each section there. Or maybe I don't even split up the 14 at all. I, I just do two lots of 14 times 3. Mm, so there's a few things that can be done there. Have a look at this one. 15 multiplied by 8. Now, pause the video and have a think. How can that be broken down into parts to work out the answer to 15 multiplied by 8? What could be done? Well, let's have a look at a few possible alternatives. Um, it could be that I split the 15 up into 10 and 5. So I do 10 lots of 8 and 5 lots of 8. 10 lots of 8 is 80, 5 lots of 8 is 40. Uh, so in total it'll be 120 squares. Or maybe I split the, uh, the 8 up instead of the 15. I do 15 times 4 twice. So double 15 times 4. Equally it could be that I split it, there's, it up into three sections. So I could do 5 times 8 and 5 times 8 and another 5 times 8. So 5 times 8 and then multiply that by 3. So 5 eighths of 40, 40 times 3, 120. So lots of room for flexibility there. Now, now have a look at this. I call this I know so. And it's when you know one multiplication fact and you can use it to work out another one. So let's say 16 multiplied by 7 is 112. So you'll have to trust me on this one. 16 squares along the top, seven, um, 7 sets of 16 is 112 squares in total. Um, so let's say I know that fact. How can I use that to work out 16 multiplied by 9? Now have a think. Pause the video. Have a think. How will the picture look different? How are those facts linked? Okay, let's have a look how that picture changes. Well, 16 multiplied by 7, um, to make that 16 multiplied by 9, well, I'll have two more lots of 16. Um, so in total, it'll be 32 more. 16 nines, 144. I can see how those questions are linked, though. What about this one? 16 multiplied by 7, again, is 112. Well, what about 19 multiplied by 7? Again, pause the video. How will the picture look different now? How are those facts related? Well, let's have a look at how it becomes different. Um, and can you see? Now I have 19 lots of 7. So I've got three more lots of 7. Can you see them here? Um, so in total, it is 21 more. So if I know this, 16 times 7, to work out 19 times 7, I just need three more lots of 7. So, two questions for you to finish with. 21 multiplied by 8 is 168. H how can I use that to calculate 21 multiplied by 6? And what about 15 times 8 is 120? 17 times 8? How are those facts related? Pause the video. H how are they related? And can you use that to work out the answers to those questions? Okay, well, let's have a look. 21 multiplied by 8, 168. 21 multiplied by 6, well, it will be two fewer 21s. So it will be 42 less. So that will be 126. 15 multiplied by 8 is 120. 17 multiplied by 8? Well, there, I'll have two more lots of 8. I hope those birds didn't put you off too much. Just like normal, to find your task, go anywhere underneath this video, click on the blue link, and it'll open up this page. 
Now, whichever task you're going for, what we're looking for is a deep understanding of the different ways you can see multiplication uh, and connections between questions. So you could have a go at task A. So a related fact web, you might use eight times six equals 48 or 17 times eight equals 136 or another calculation. Which different related facts can you find? So I know this, so I can work out that. I wonder how many different ways you can do that. Um, equally, you might have a go at, at task B. Find three ways to calculate 16 times 9. Uh, I've given you these three rectangles that you could, so you could cut them up to show the different ways that you could split up the 16 and or the 9 to do that calculation. Um, so again, I wonder which different ways you'll find. Or, or perhaps task C. Now in task C, I've given you a little sequence of questions. Um, now you'll notice today I've not put the answers in. You, you could work out the answers with a calculator if you needed to. The thing that's really important is you think, well, what's the connection? 17 multiplied by six is 102. So what about 17 multiplied by seven? 15 multiplied by seven. How are these questions linked? 15 multiplied by nine. Then I would love to see your own sequence of questions that you design. What's the link between the questions? How can you use one to work out the answers to the other. Again, really enjoy exploring this big idea of related facts in multiplication. Whatever the level of challenge of the questions that you use, really deepen your thinking in that way. Enjoy, see you tomorrow.